welcome to another powerful episode of the Near Liver Around podcast. It's New Year, it's it's Thanksgiving Eve. It's Thanksgiving Eve. It's eleven forty nine, and I have Latasha with me. Latasha, how are you doing? I'm doing, I'm doing well. Listen, Latasha has a powerful story. You were telling me about your story. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Tell me about. I mean, tell me about you, Latasha. Welcome to the Near Liver Around podcast. Oh, well, thank you for having me. I'm surprised that I'm on here. I, I'm so, like, wasn't ready. But... I know you were ready, but... <laughs> you had... She, she has a powerful story, and I wanted you to share your story. Tell me, you were telling me about... Now, you told me you got... You know, you have your masters and everything, but you told me about something that happened with you. You have your GED, I and t- tell me about tell me your story about about this how you got your GED late. You you started at twenty four. I know you have your masters, okay? But tell me the story. Um, but I was a young mother. I, I dropped out of school um, because I had to take care of my kids, and then I always just wanted to teach my kids that education was the key. So at some point, I just wanted to go back to school. I was like, look, you got to get your, you got to get your GED. And then I told myself, if you get your GED, you got to go to college. So I went and, I went and got um, enrolled into a GED program and it was called the Center for Literacy. And I went there and I studied and I got my GED. What age you dropped out of school? I dropped out of school at the age of 17. What happened and uh, what, what the age you dropped out of school? I had my first child at 17 oh. with radio. Yeah, I, I, um, I had my first shot at 17. Yeah. Um, it was just was hard. I, I thought I was, I knew it all. My mom was always, you know, um, supportive, telling me to stay in school, whatever. But I, I just, at that, at that time, it, that wasn't a priority for me. Yeah. Just being young and dumb. Yeah. Um, and then I, at some point, I just got serious. Around 24, 25, I got serious about, you know, just being a, a example for my children. Yeah. Um, and then I enrolled into a GED program, like I said. I, I It took me a while to get serious about that, but at some point I really got serious. And then I got my GED. I went to community college at, in 2013. You can pull up at that corner. And I just have not stopped until I got my master's degree in 2019. I always worked. I always maintained the job. Yeah. And yeah, I, I mean, that's just what happened. That's how it happened. Oh my God! Oh wow! And tell, and tell me. So when you dropped, were you, did you have any bitterness, any anger at when you dropped out of school at age 17? How was your, what about your parents? Were they supportive? Um, well, everything was partying and bullshit back there, right? Yes, yes. Even though I had to take care of my kids, it was, it was all about partying yeah. and bullshitting. And, you know, and nothing never was really serious until it really got serious. Um, I always took care of my kids, but, yeah. you know, it was never serious. Like, I was, as long as I was feeding my kids, as long as I was getting my little food stamps, you know, my mom kicked me out at, like, 20 because she was like, if you growner than me, you need to be out there on your own. Yeah. So then I find myself living on my own with my two sons. Um, and then, you know, just watching them grow up and, and I'm always, when they going to school and I'm always telling them, you got to learn, pay attention in school. For yeah. me not to do that, that was a problem for me. Yeah. So I just felt like I had to set an example. And my example was, first of all, not 
holding myself accountable, right? Yeah. I had to hold myself accountable for the things. And if I wanted, but I worked at a gas station, right? Yeah. I started out at a gas station and then, yeah. you know, I progressed from there and then I worked with the IDD people the whole time yeah. studying. And then I went on to Devereaux working in mental health and now I'm a social worker and I love, love, love what I do. Yes, and you have your master, your bachelor's, yes, your yes, social I'm, I'm worker. Social, yes, I'm and what, what, what happened ever what happened to your son then? So my sons are grown. I so mind you, I have four children now. Yeah. When I was talking, when I was talking about my younger year, I only had two boys. So I have a twenty-six-year-old. Yeah. I have a twenty-four-year-old. I have a sixteen-year-old, and my only daughter is fourteen. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah. Oh wow! There's so much, and um, there's so much to talk about. What um, what? you have to tell um what um motivation you have to um, encouragement in, in any encouraging words for young um young girls young people who the probably drop out of school they think that their dreams are derailed and so on and by the way i'm 44 and you're in that area i don't want to be yeah. being that kind of show <laughs> but I, I mean but you said you started at 25 what is it that you what a message you have for young girls and young people who are struggling you know, drop out of school, parents kick them out, and so on and so forth. What message you have for them? So, first of all, it's never over, right? Yes. It's not, like, as long as you put your mind to something, as long as you believe, like, yes. it is never over. You might feel like it's over. You might feel like you're down and you're out. But it's, once you commit yourself to something, yeah. stick with it. Because somebody out there is going to encourage you. Somebody out there, it might not be your mom, and it might not be your sister, and it might, but somebody, it's always somebody who's out there like, you can do this. When I I was in college when I went to community college I was around a whole bunch of young kids and I'm in there yeah. grown as hell but it was a professor that said you got this you can do this and I'm telling anybody and it's not about young girls yeah. and it is about young men it's about young women it's about anybody that really wants to put their mind to it you can do it without question have you ever felt like giving up oh all the time oh um, wow all the time but i couldn't yes. i couldn't because i saw the light right yes. i saw the light at the end of the tunnel yes. i knew if i gave up all this stuff that i've been going through yes. it would not have mattered right yes. me getting my ged or me starting a community that would not matter and and every time i accomplish something i set a, a bigger Goals. So I said, I'm going to get my GED, okay? Okay, Tasha, you get your GED, you're going to college. Okay, I got my GED, Went to, you're going to get your associates. And I got my associates, I was like, you need a bachelor's now. Then I got my bachelor's, I was like, girl, if you're going to get your bachelor's, you might as well get your master's. Oh, and wow. that's just what I did. So sometimes it just takes setting a short goal, right? Yes. To get uh, do that short goal to get to the long goal. Because I didn't stop until I felt like at this point, I can go in somebody's organization and be a blessing yes. and be like I started out as a regular social worker yes. now I am running a whole team of five people I run my own team I am a manager now yes. and it only took me five years to get into this company and to become management Oh, so you wow. can always have your and I work for DHS yes. so my job is to make sure kids are safe in right. their homes Oh, wow, wow, wow. Yes, yes. This is the Neoliberal Rome Podcast. Happy Thanksgiving, guys. You guys can do it. What? Who has been your motive? Who, and no one has, who has been, today, who has been your biggest motivation, motivating force? Um, I want to say my children and my mother, right? Without my mother, yes. Um, this is the lady that used to watch my kids when I had to work overnight in the gas station. Yes. This is a praying woman when I didn't believe in myself that I know she had God on my side. Yes. Because she prayed for me. Yes. Somebody prayed for me is a song that's out there. Yes. Had me on a mind, took the time to pray for me. And that was a praying mother that I had. And then she had a praying mother. So that was my grandmother before she passed away. And then my children came into this world and i know if nobody else take care of your kids guess what yeah you have to take care of your kids so my motivation is just being 
like my mom and my children. And and now, in this point in my life, it's just maturing and learning and understanding people and, and learning to love. Everybody has to love because this world is losing it. So we have to love, learn, and live. That is so powerful. And that's where we'll end it. This is powerful. This is Thanksgiving. This is our Thanksgiving special. What are you thankful for this Thanksgiving? This is the Nearly Brown Podcast, and we're speaking with Latasha. Latasha. And um, Latasha, you said you want to be a motivational speaker. I do. Oh, so you, you still have more things to accomplish. I still have oh. so there go my goalposts again. Yes. I'm going to be a motivational speaker. This is the Nearly Brown coming to you live from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We'll be right back after these messages. This is November 23, 2023, Thanksgiving. May you enjoy an amazing day, amazing week, whatever is left of it with your family, celebrating this year. It has been quite a miserable year for some people, and it's still happening. But I wish you all the best, and I pray that God will, will meet you in the area of your need, whether through your friends, family, or followers. And if you don't, have anything awesome to give God thanks for this year. May we give God thanks for your life because you are awesome and you are special because life is a precious thing and we are called to make something out of it. The life we live, it comes from the breath of God. So we have a responsibility to make it precious and to help others. This is the Neil Burrow Podcast. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Yes. When the tide get rough, I will sing, yeah. Though the times are tough, I will sing to God to come in my heart. Give me grace to carry on and run the race till the end of time. In your great embrace, I'll stay straight. In your great embrace, find the passion, the love to get you through. Be inspired in the fire for your being made in gold. Don't give up. On yourself take hold of life and be bold your breakthrough about here oh yeah <laughs> oh will I get old before the storm ends it's death doors nigh before my tide. Well, I make it. <laughs> 